Hey guys, welcome back to our channel where I inspire your desire to be great, to be great, to be great. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching another video. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, um, I'm going to share with you guys how I studied for my citizenship, citizenship test and passed it and also helped my cousin um, study for his citizenship, citizenship test and pass it. I'm so excited. So I figured since I successfully passed and I helped someone else do the same, I'm going to share with y'all some methods, some tips, and I'm going to include the questions um, in this video because I feel like it will be cool. If it's a cool audio or yeah it's a cool video to help other people study for their citizenship i'm gonna try to make it as short as possible but as effective as possible so we're gonna get straight into it so one of the first methods you can use to study for your citizenship is the note cards method so if um i have note cards somewhere in this house but i'm not gonna look for them right now but i'm y'all know what a note card is i feel like or index card if I may say hold on I'm gonna just google it and show y'all so these are note cards so when I first started out um, I used these I had a hundred of them and I literally hand wrote all hundred questions from um, the packet thing on the front to the back of them I threw them out because I already got my citizenship I didn't think I was gonna do this video so yeah I don't have it to actually show y'all but I'm going to make it work and so that y'all can understand what I'm saying. So I got these note cards. You can get them from the dollar store, from Office Depot, anywhere. And I literally hand wrote the question on the front side, the answer on the back side. So you can study using the um, note cards, look at the front, guess the answer, um, and then turn it over in the back. And then, um, you know, the answer will be on the back. So that's the first method that you could use. The second method that you could use that is pretty effective to me is the partner method so one of my cousins he was going to get his citizenship the same time that I was going to get mine around the same time so we partnered up and we helped each other study so um, the if you google the citizenship test questions hold on citizenship test okay so google citizenship test and if you scroll down, you will see it on the USCIS website. That's the most recent, um, wait, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Hold on. Oh, it's the first one, sorry. It's the first one. So it's on the USCIS website and that's where all 100 questions are. So what I did, I downloaded this on my phone so that I could have it. You could save it on your phone or you could just keep searching for it every single time that you need it. And I would ask the questions, yeah. So I would ask my cousin the questions, he would give me the answers, and then same thing, vice versa. He had it on his phone, he would ask me the question, and then I would give him the answer. He'll tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong. I also use this to study, because you could see, um, you could see you know the answers and stuff like that right then and there which i figured was very helpful another method that i feel like is helpful this is the third method is the audio method so you could go on youtube you could take videos like this one like i said later on i'm gonna go through each 100 questions and help whoever needs help to study to study for it so you could do the audio method you could look for it through youtube you could um if i'm not mistaken some people told me i think if you go to like your local library they may have like a CD or something like that that you could just pop in I know CDs are traditional but it worked for some people you could pop it in and just listen to it while you're driving again and again and again until you memorize all the questions and the other way like I said is the traditional way the paper method if you don't want to work with somebody or maybe you don't have somebody to work with you could go about it just looking at the paper and just try your best to memorize it yourself just like a regular test just like a regular exam so Without further ado, um, I'm going to get into how I ask, answer the questions, and memorize them, studying it on my own because I feel like this was also an effective method. So I'm going to go through all 100 questions and each question I'm going to break down and help you remember the answer to that question because this is what I did and it worked for me. The other thing too that's really, really, really helpful is um, when I first started out studying like for the first two weeks I would say I asked the questions in order because in my mind it's like it's easier for me to remember something in 
um, in like a sequential order rather than it being all over the place all the time. So I memorized the answer to the questions in sequential order, the order that they asked them in. And then after that, I would kind of mix it up, scramble it, same thing with my cousin. The other method I forgot that is also very effective is the apt method. So if you look up um, citizenship, citizenship app, um, I didn't really use that method because it just didn't really work for me. I probably used it for like a few days or something like that. But you could look up the citizenship test app and then they'll have like, they'll ask you random questions and stuff like that. And you could just answer it. And then if you get it wrong, they'll tell you the right answer. But again, I'm a sequential person organized person like i need the questions to be asked in order so that i could get familiar with them before i can um get asked a question like randomly so let's get into it um so the first question and like i said this is very organized like the paper method is very organized so the first question is what is the supreme law of the land the constitution I don't, I don't have a specific tip for every single question on how to remember them, but I'll just add them in as I go. But we all know the supreme law of the land is the Constitution. The second question is, what does the Constitution do? So there's three options for it. The, each question that has more than one answer, there's more than one way to memorize that answer. Um, not memorize the answer, but there's you could pick any one of those answers. You don't have to answer all three. So perfect example is this one, which is the second question. As y'all can see, it says, what does the Constitution do? And you could either say set up the government, defines the government, protects basic rights of Americans. So whichever one is easiest for you to remember, I encourage you to go with that answer. So again, question number two, what does the Constitution do? Sets up the government, defines the government, protects basic rights of Americans. Third question, the idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are these words? The, the answer to that question is we the people. How I remember that, I remember in middle school we um, we used to, you don't have to sing this, it was in a song, so it would go we the people in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility. So it was a song, so it was easy for me to remember we the people, we the people, we the people. So I sang it to myself so that I remember that answer. So the idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. The first three words is we the people. Question number four, what is an amendment? So again, like I told y'all, this one, there's two answers to it, a change to the Constitution and addition to the Constitution. So whichever one is easier for you to remember, easiest one for me was a change to the Constitution. Um, in addition, that wasn't going to stick in my brain because change is a word that I'm more familiar with. So I know amend means to change, change, amend. So what is an amendment? An amendment is a change to the Constitution. What do, so question number five is what do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? This one, common knowledge, but it's called the Bill of Rights. So the first 10 amendments to the Constitution is the Bill of Rights. I would read it to myself put it in a sentence um, and memorize it that way. So again, what do we call the first 10 amendments to the Constitution? The Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. What is one, question number six, what is one right or freedom from the First Amendment? Again, this one has multiple answers, okay? So it's speech, religion, assembly, press, petition of the government whichever one is easiest to remember for me the easiest one to remember was freedom of speech because it's a right that everybody always like to utilize so one right or freedom freedom of speech or you could say freedom of religion if you're a religious person you can choose to memorize that religion is a freedom here so that is one right or freedom from the first amendment question number seven how many amendments does the constitution have 27 so amendments does the constitution have so the constitution has two words right the answer is 27 so that is also two words that's another way that i memorize it 27 the constitution so the constitution has 27 amendments that's how i memorize the answer to that question question number eight 
what did the Declaration of Independence do? This one is also a multi-answer question, so you could pick any one that's easiest for you to remember. So question number eight, again, it says, what did the Declaration of Independence do? Announced our independence from Great Britain. That's, that's one of the answer. Declared our independence from Great Britain. Second question. Next, I mean, second answer, sorry. Next answer said that the US is free from Great Britain. I had chose to remember declared our independence from Great Britain because I remember this card game that we used to play growing up as a child called I Declare War. And I just, I don't know, that just stuck in my head. Declared our independence from Great Britain. So that's how I remember that question. Question number nine, what are two rights in the Declaration of Independence? So this is a three answer question. You could pick any one of the three answers. So it's life, liberty, or pursuit of happiness, right? So what are two rights? It asks for two rights. Life starts with an L, liberty starts with an L. So life and liberty is the two easiest ones to remember. So I always remember life and liberty. So two L's, what are two rights? rights in the Declaration of Independence. You only got to remember two. Those were the two that I chose to remember. Question number 10, what is freedom of religion? You can practice any religion or not practice a religion. That one is pretty easy. That one is pretty straightforward. Freedom. Freedom is a choice. You could choose to do something or not to do it. And that's how I remember that answer. Question number 11. What is the economic system in the United States? I remember when I first got this question, it was not easy, but I remembered it over time. So the economic system, there's two options, capitalist economy or market economy. I'm more familiar with the word market, so I memorized market economy. Okay, so that's the simplest way I could put it. Um, the next section is section B, system of government. So that's the other thing, like I said, it's broken down into different sections. It's in an order that is, makes it easier to remember. So question number 13, name one branch or part of the government. So this is a multi-section as well, right? So Congress is one answer. Legislative is another answer. President is another answer. Executive is another answer. The courts is another answer or judicial. Again, I picked words that I was most familiar with. So one word that I'm very familiar with is courts or president, right? So I just part, I mean, I just connect government with president. Government, the president is a part of the government. So it's automatically a branch. I, that made it easier for me to remember. Question number 14, what stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? This was another question that I um, struggled with, but again, I have a good tip on this one for you guys. So what stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful? Checks and balances is one answer. Separation of powers is two answer. Checks and balances was easier for me to remember because in order for something to not become more than the other, it has to be balanced. So I remembered, okay, checks and balances. So check to make sure it's not imbalanced. Okay. Does that make sense? So so what stops one branch of government from becoming too powerful is checks and balances. Question number 15, who is in charge of the executive branch? The president is in charge of the executive branch. So I think president, CEO, boss, like, you know, a bigger person. So when I think of executive, execute, like I said, just think big. I think of the president. So that was easy for me to remember, the CEO of a company, chief executive officer. So yeah, who is in charge of the executive branch? The president. Question number 16, who makes federal laws? So this again is a three answer, three different answers. And again, you only have to memorize one. You don't have to memorize all three. It gives you an option. And if you say any one out of the three, the officer will pass you on that question. So who makes federal laws? Congress is an option, Senate and House of Representatives, or US or national legislature. I remember Congress, how I remember Congress is because you congregate to make a law. So who makes federal laws? Congress, Congress congregates to make federal laws. 
hope that helps. Question number 17, what are the two parts of the US Congress, right? So how I remember this question, because I remember my cousin struggled with this question and I helped him remember, US two, right? The Senate and House of Representatives. So remember the S is for Senate, and then of course House of Representatives is just House of Representatives. So that's question number 17. What are two parts of the US Congress? The Senate, remember the S, the S, the S in US, US Congress. So the Senate and House of Representatives. Question number 18. How many U.S. Senators are there? So I also had to help my cousin with this one. Um, as you guys can see, that's why I said I liked um, looking at the questions as well because I feel like that was very helpful and that made it easier. So if y'all see here, U.S. Senators, one, two, three. So U.S. Senators, the answer to that is 100. 100 is a number that has three numbers. So one, zero, zero, 100. Got it? So that's how I remembered it. There are 100 US Senators. Question number 19, we elect a US Senator for how many years? Again, this is another trick that I use. The answer to that question is six, okay? US Senator, Senator six, six Senator. So we elect a US Senator for six years. That's how I remember the answer to that question. Question number 20, who is one of your state's US Senators now? This part, there are some questions in here they are going to vary by state. You have to go online and just Google U.S. Senator, right? Those questions that I needed to memorize, like separate, that's not listed on this paper because it tells you, again, clearly on there, the answer itself, it says answers will vary, right? So if the, since the answer will vary by state, you're going to have to go and do your research and it's very easy to find on Google. Just Google, let's say you live in Connecticut like I do. Connecticut U.S. Senator, just Google that and it'll tell you. I wrote that down on a, um, on a, on a note card, on an index card. So there are some questions I wrote down on an index card, the answer to, took a picture of it and I kept looking at it over and over again so that I could memorize it. So that's how you would answer question number 20. Question number 21, the House of Representatives have how many voting members? So again, this is another one. Looking at it is very, very helpful. I don't know if y'all could see that there. Hold on, let me do that. So. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? The answer to that is 435, right? House of Representatives is three words. 435 has three numbers. So 435, House of Representatives, 435. So that made it easier for me to remember. That's how I remembered the answer to that question. Question number 22, we elect a U.S. representative for how many years? The answer to that question is two, right? U.S. two, U.S. representative. You could break it down as U.S. is one word, representative is a second word. So you elect a U.S. representative for two years. Question number 23, name your U.S. representative. Again, this is another answer that's going to vary. All you have to do is just go into Google. If you live in Connecticut, for example, just Google U.S. representative in Connecticut. It'll tell you, again, write it down on that sticky note that you're going to take a picture of, keep it in your phone, and just look at it on your free time. Look at it away from this question. Question number 24, who does a U.S. senator represent? The answer to that question is all people of the state. Question number 25, why do some states have more representatives than other states? Again, this has three, it's a three part answer, but you only have to memorize one. First one is the state's population. Second one is they have more people. Some states have more people than others. So that one is pretty common sense, but just to reiterate, why do some states have more representatives than others? The bigger the state, the bigger, rep the more representatives they're gonna need. So the state population, they have more people or some states just have more people. Those are the three answers. Question number 26, we elect a president for how many years? Four years, we all know election, presidential election election year in the United States happen every four years. That one is pretty simple to remember. 
Question number 27, in what month do we vote for president? November. Let's say you live under a rock and you don't know what month election happened. President is a long word. November is a long word. So that's how I would look at it. Hold on, and remember. So you see president is there, November is there. So eight letters, nine letters, November is the month that we elect our president. What is the name of the president of the United States now? We all know that changes every four years. So depending on when you see this video, whether it's four years from now when we have a different president or now we all know Joe Biden is the current president of the United States. What is the name of the vice president of the United States? Kamala Harris. Again, it might change in another four years, but you know, just stay with the times. That's the best way I can tell you to remember that. Um, question number 30, if the president can no longer serve, who becomes president? The vice president, right? So the vice president is like an assistant president. That's the best way I could tell you to memorize that. If the coach can't coach anymore, the assistant coach is gonna coach in replacement of the coach. So not an assistant vice president, not an assistant president, but vice president. Question number 31, if both the president and the vice president can no longer serve, who becomes president? The Speaker of the House. So how I remember that, president, vice president is three words, right? Or two, three, four, five. Yeah, the president, the vice president is five words, if I may say. The Speaker of the House is five words. So that's how I would remember that as, a, um, as who can become um <laughs> who becomes president if the vice president or the president cannot serve any longer question number 32 who is the commander in chief of the military the president again when you think of commander think of big think of top think of number one so yeah commander president president commander who is the commander in chief of the military the president question number 33 who signs bills to becomes laws again the president the president is like he's the boss you know he's the big man so he's the one that called the shots so that's what I think of when I was memorizing that question so who signs bill to become laws the president who vetoes bills the president that's question number 34 um, again it's no easier way for me to break down these ones for you because I feel like they're pretty self-explanatory. Question number 35, what does the president's cabinet do? Advises the president. So think of a cabinet as an advisor. Cabinet advises the president. So that's how I remember the answer to that question. Question number 36, what are two cabinet level position? This one, there are a lot of answers to it, but again, choose words that you are the most familiar with or look at words that jump out to you the most and memorize it so different answers you could use for this question is secretary of agriculture secretary of commerce secretary of defense secretary of education secretary of energy secretary of health and human services secretary of homeland security secretary of housing and urban development secretary of the interior secretary of labor secretary of state secretary of transportation secretary of the treasury secretary of veterans affair attorney general or vice president so i like the fact that there's a lot of secretaries right and you only need to memorize two the two I chose to memorize, I don't know if y'all can see that, is education and energy, because those are two E's. Those are the only two there that starts with E. So I memorized Secretary of Education, Secretary of Energy. Those are two cabinet level positions, or you could choose um, anything that's easiest for you to remember on this, um, out of the options that they gave you. Question number 37, what does the judicial branch do? So this one is a multi-part question. The judicial branch reviews laws, explain laws, resolves disputes, or decides if a law goes against the Constitution. The easiest thing for me to remember here was explain. Judicial explains. Judicial branch explains laws. That's how I memorized that. Question number 38. What is the highest court in the United States? The Supreme Court. Supreme, highest, biggest, 
that's the easiest way to remember it so supreme um supreme court is the highest court question number 39 how many justices are on the supreme court that's something that you have to look up again because it can vary but the beautiful thing i like here it gives you a link that you would click on to go and find that out so um i think when i was doing it it was nine if i'm not mistaken and i'm pretty sure it's still nine but just for the sake of this video i'm still going to oops i should never did that i'm still going to google it how many justices so again i told y'all nine that one was easy back to the questions i hope this video is helpful just being able to share with y'all what i did to um memorize these questions and help my cousin do the same so that is question number 39 we left off at question number 40 who is the chief justice of the united states now robert i think it's john roberts if i'm not mistaken but again these answers can change with time so always just google double check and just write it down on a um write it down on an index card so that you can memorize it so who is the chief justice of the united states i'm pretty sure it's john roberts and question number 41 under our constitution some powers belong to the federal government what is one power of the federal government so to print money is one option declare war is another option create an army is another option make treaties is another option again i picked the easiest one for me to remember money um print money was the easiest because i like money so i just remember federal print money so what is one power of the federal government to print money that's the one i chose to remember question number 42 under our constitution some powers belong to the states what is one power of the states there's provide schooling and education provide protection provide safety give a driver's license or approve and approve zoning and land use so the one that i remember is police protection um because there's a lot more local polices than there are state polices so i just keep kept that in mind that police 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 state police what is one power of the states is provide protection provide police question number 43 who is the governor of your state now so again that question is going to vary that the answer to that question is Ned Lamont if you live in Connecticut, but if you don't, you just have to search for the answer to it. Question number 44, what is the capital of your state? Again, the answer is going to vary depending on what state you live in. I live in Connecticut. The capital of Connecticut is Hartford. Question number 45, what are two major political parties in the U.S., Democrat and Republican? that one i feel like it's very easy to remember so i remembered it democrat republican um question number 46 what is the political party of the president now if i'm not mistaken is democrat um but you could google it just to be sure yeah so i was right democratic party <laughs> um okay so back to the citizenship test Question number 47, what is the name of the Speaker of the House of Representatives now? As far as I know, it is Nancy Pelosi. How I remember her is now. So it says the Speaker of the House of Representatives now. Now starts with the N, Nancy start with the N. So that's how I remembered it, Nancy Pelosi. So now we are on to section C, rights and responsibilities. So question number 48, there are four amendments to the constitution about who can vote. Describe one of them. First one, citizens 18 and older. Two, you don't have to pay a, t you don't have to pay a poll tax to vote. Three, any citizen can vote. Or a male citizen of any race can vote so the easiest one to remember is citizen 18 and older um, question number 45 what is one responsibility that is only for US citizens there's two answers to that serve on a jury or vote in a federal election vote in a federal election 
that's easy to remember but also serve in a jury 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 duty that's another way that you can remember it that everybody has to do jury duty so you could pick either one whichever is easiest to remember question number 50 name one right only for the u.s only for united states citizens so the there are two options to that question and that is vote in a federal election or run for federal office so it wasn't hard for me to memorize that because i know when i wasn't a citizen and election happened people always used to ask me are you going to vote are you going to vote and i used to have to tell them i can't vote because i'm not a citizen so that's the easiest way to remember the answer to that question question number 51 what are two rights of everyone living in the united states freedom remember that freedom thing thing that i mentioned in a previous question so there's freedom of expression freedom of speech freedom of assembly freedom to petition freedom of religion or the right to bear arms i feel like the top three easiest one to remember is freedom of speech freedom of religion or the right to bear arms because those usually are the most controversial issues in the U.S. anyway. Question number 52, what do we show loyal to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? If you've never said the Pledge of Allegiance, you know you're set, you're, you should know that you're pledging allegiance to the flag because you say it when you're saying it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So there's two answers to that question. There's the United States or the flag. Just remember when you stood in school, you faced the flag and you repeated the pledge of allegiance. That's what you're giving allegiance to. Question number 53, what is one promise you make when you become a U.S. citizen? number one <laughs> promise you make there's multiple options but i feel like this is the easiest one it's a no-brainer you give up loyalty to other countries you're no longer a citizen of any other country only to the united states the second one is to defend the constitution and the laws of the u.s obey the laws of the u.s serve in the u.s military or just serve the nation easiest one to remember is that you give up your loyalty to all other countries question number 54 how old do you have to be how old do citizens do have to be to vote for president 18 and older very simple question number 55 what are two ways that americans can participate in their democracy easiest one there's multiple ones but the two that i remember best was vote or run for office but i'm gonna list the other options so two ways that americans can participate in a democracy they can vote join a political party help with the campaign join a civic group join a community group give an elected official your opinion on an issue call senators and representatives or publicly support or oppose an issue or policy run for office write to a newspaper so again the two that i chose that was easiest to remember is vote and to run for office question number 56 when is the last day you can set in federal income tax returns april 15th if you file taxes everybody know that that's the deadline question number 57 when must all men register for the selective service at age 18 you can't register for selective service until you're 18 or or older so between age 18 and 26 is another option but the easiest one to remember is age 18. Um, now we are in the american history section and we're on question number 58 so a colonial period and independence question number 58 what is one reason colonists came to america what do everybody love the most about america freedom that's the easiest way to remember that but other answers is freedom political party religious freedom economic opportunity practice their religion or escape persecution question number 59 who lived in america before the europeans arrived american indians or native americans very simple question number 60 what group of people was taken to america and sold sold as slaves africans very easy or people from africa very easy to remember question number 61 why did the colonists fight the british three options because of high taxes because the british army stayed in their houses or because they didn't have self-government high taxes is the easiest one to remember because everybody go crazy about taxes being high so that's the one that i remember the best question number 62 who wrote the declaration of independence thomas Je jefferson so to remember that one declaration independence thomas jefferson or you could just say jefferson you don't have to say his first and last name question number 63 
three when did the declare when was the declaration of independence adopted so how i remembered this one we all know july 4th independence day but you have to remember the year so declaration of independence is three so the the date is july 4 july 4th 1776 okay declaration of independence july 4th 1776 that's how i remembered that question number 64 there were 13 original states name three i just always remember pretty much the east coast and some of the south so new hampshire is an option massachusetts is an option rhode island is an option connecticut is an option new york new jersey pennsylvania delaware maryland virginia north carolina south carolina and georgia how I remember this one, the states that are right next to each other, New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Those are three states that are directly like right next to each other. So I picked those three to remember. Question number 65, what happened at the Constitutional Convention? The Constitution was written. That's one answer. Or the Founding Fathers wrote the Constitution. So common sense, constitutional convention it's a convention for the constitution so the constitution was written at the constitutional convention that's how i remember that one when was the constitution written the constitution was written in 1787 so i know it's very easy to get mixed up with when the declaration of independence was adopted and when the constitution was written so i always remembered that the constitution was written 11 years after the Declaration of Independence was adopted. So if you do 1787 minus 1776, that it's 11. So it's an 11 year difference. And that question comes after the Declaration of Independence question. So you know the Constitution was written 11 years after the Declaration of Independence was adopted. So question number 67, the Federalist paper supported the passage of the US Constitution. Name one of the writers. The way I remember, there's four writers, but the writer I remember the most was John Jay because he had the same initial for his first and his last name. So another option is James Madison. Second option is Alexander Hamilton. There's Publius, and again, there's John Jay. But I remember John Jay because I was like, JJ, <laughs> you know, like I kind of, made something funny out of it in my head so jj um is one of the writers of not wait one of the writers of the federalist papers so that's how i remember that question number 68 what is one thing benjamin franklin is famous for he was a u.s diplomat that's one he's the oldest member of the constitutional convention or he's the first postmaster general of the u.s or he wrote, um, he's a writer of the Poor Richard's Almanac, or he started the first free libraries. The one I remembered the most was U.S. Diplomat because it was the shortest one on there, so I felt like it was the easiest to remember. You could think Benjamin, U.S. Franklin, Diplomat. So Benjamin Franklin was a U.S. Diplomat. Question number 69, who is the father of our country? George Washington, GW, that's another way you can remember it, or you could just say Washington, you don't have to say the first name. So again, George Washington is the father of our country. Who was the first president? Again, George Washington. So George Washington, he was the first president, so that made him the father of our country. That's how I remember that. That's question number 70. So now we are on part B, the 1800s, question number 71. What territory did the US buy from France in 1803? So how I remember that is Louisiana, <laughs> okay? Um, France, France is a country that they have accent, they have a dialect. Louisiana is a Southern country, they have an accent, they have a dialect. That's how I remembered it. So you could say the Louisiana territory or you could just say Louisiana. So what territory did the US buy from France in 1803? Louisiana. Question number 72, name one war fought by the US in the 1800s. How I remember the answer to this question, one of the answers is War of 1812. 
1812 is a year in the 1800s. So War of 1812 was one of the wars fought by the U.S. in the 1800s. The second, another answer is Mexican-American War, Civil War, or Spanish-American War. But again, War of 1812 was the easiest to remember. Question number 73, name the U.S. war between the North and the South. The U.S. <laughs> The name of the U.S. war between the North and the South is the Civil War, or you could call it the war between states. I felt like the Civil War was the easiest to remember. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Slavery is an answer. Economic reasons is an answer. States' right is an answer. But I felt like slavery was the easiest to remember. Slavery was one problem that led to the Civil War or you could consider economic reasons. Civil war is two words, economic reasons is two words, so you could choose to remember that one instead. Question number 75. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? Everyone pretty much knows the answers to these questions, but he freed the slaves, or you could say he saved the Union, or he led the U.S. during the Civil War. The easiest one for me to remember was that he freed the slaves. Question number 76, what did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Again, freed the slaves is an answer, freed the slaves in the Confederacy, freed the slaves in the Confederate states, or freed the slaves in most Southern states. So that was um, the fourth answer, but the answer I remembered the most because I felt like shorter statements are easier to remember than longer ones because there's so much you have to remember. Um, so I chose the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves. That's the answer I chose to remember. Question number 76, what did Susan B. Anthony do? Fought for women rights, fought for civil rights. The answer I chose to remember is women rights because Susan is a woman's name. So of course she's gonna fight for women's rights. Section C, recent American history and other important historical information. So question number 78, name one war fought by the US in the 1900s, okay? I'm gonna tell you how I remembered this one as well. So there's World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, or the Gulf War. One war, World War I. One. one war, World War I. So that's how I remembered the answer to that question. Name one war fought by the U.S. in the 1900s, World War I. Question number 79, who was president during World War I? Again, the answer to that question is Woodrow Wilson. World War W, two W, World War, Wood, Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, okay? So that's how I remember the answer to that. Question number 80. Who was president during the Great Depression and World War II? So how I remember the answer to this one, the answer to this one is Franklin Roosevelt. Roosevelt has two O's in it. You can say Roosevelt, you don't have to say Franklin. They're asking you who was president during the Great Depression and World War II, which is two events that you have to remember. So I remembered the two events two O's in the person's name that was president during that time, Roosevelt. That's how I remember the answer to that. Question number 81, who did the United States fight in World War II? So Japan, Germany, and Italy, but I remembered it in a different order. I said Japan, Italy, and Germany, and then I took the initial, the letter that started with each um, country, so Japan, Italy, Germany, and I remembered Jig. So who did the U.S. fight in the world in World War II? Jig, Japan, Italy, Germany. That's how I remembered that one. Question number 82, before he was president, Eisenhower was a general. What war was he in? World War II. So I remember President Eisenhower, two, right? So World War, two W's in it, two. World War II, 
there we go question number 83 during the cold war what was the main concern of the united states the answer to that is communism how i remember that communism cold war so cold war starts with the c communism starts with the c i remembered during the cold war what was the main concern of the u.s communism question number 84 what movement tried to end racial discrimination civil rights the civil rights movement Question number 85, what did Martin Luther King do? Fought for civil rights. So Martin Luther King fought for civil rights. Question number 86, what major event happened on September 11, 2001? Terrorists attacked the United States. That was a major event. Just 90% of people in the US know of that event. So that's the answer to that. Um, Question number 87, name one American Indian tribe in the US. So there's multiple of them, but I'll tell y'all which one I remember. There's Cherokee, Navajo, Sioux, Chippewa, Choctaw, Pueblo, Apache, Iroquois, Creek, Blackfeet, Seminole, Cheyenne, Arawak, Shawnee, Mohegan, Horan, Oneida, Lakota, Crow, Teton, Hopi, or Inuit. The one I remembered was Mohegan, Mohegan Sun Arena, Mohegan Casino. That's a big uh, casino in Connecticut. So that one is the one that I remembered the most. Um, question number 88. So we are under integrated civics, which is geography now. We're just about done. Name one of the longest rivers in the US. Missouri is one, Mississippi is one. Both of them start with an M, so it wasn't hard to remember one of them. So Missouri River or Mississippi River. What ocean is on the west coast of the US? The answer to that question is Pacific Ocean, right? So the west coast goes by Pacific time, right? East coast is Eastern Standard Time. So Pacific, west coast, that's how I remembered it. So on the west coast, the west coast go by Pacific, um, Pacific Standard Time and the Pacific Ocean is on the west coast of the United States. Question number 90, what ocean is on the east coast of the United States? The ocean that is on the east coast is the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I don't have a specific way to remember that. So question number 91, name one US territory, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Guam, or Northern Marianne Islands. I remember Puerto Rico. That's the easiest one I felt figured was the one to remember. Um, question number 92, name one state that borders Canada. The easiest one I felt to remember was Maine or New York, because New York is a very popular state. So Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana, Idaho, Washington, or Alaska. So whichever state sticks out at you the best, that's the one that I would go with. Question number 93, name one state that borders Mexico. So California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. Easiest one to remember is New Mexico. New Mexico is one state that borders Mexico. Question number 94, what is the capital of the United States? Washington DC, that's where the White House is. Question number 95, where is the Statue of Liberty? New York Harbor or Liberty Island? You can say any one of those two, but New York is the easiest one to remember. Question number 96, why does the flag have 13 stripes? 13 original colonies. I remember the song that we used to sing in um, middle school to memorize this stuff. So it still sits in the back of my head. So it's a little bit easier for me to remember this, but 13 stripes represent 13 original colonies. Why does the flag have 50 stars? Because there is one star for each state, or you can say each star represents a state, or there are 50 states so 50 states 50 stars stars start with the s states start with the s so it's not hard to remember states or and stars question number 98 what is the name of the national anthem the star spangled banner the star is on the flag the flag is a national symbol and it's the national anthem so the star spangled banner that's how i remember it holidays question number 99 when do we celebrate independence day july 4th 7 4 july 4th the seventh month of the year the fourth day of the seventh month of the year july 4th 
Question number 100. We are at the finish line, y'all. Name two national U.S. holidays. So, New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I just memorize, I feel like, the two easiest holidays because they're back to back, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that concludes this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below if this video helped you in any way to study for your citizenship or study for maybe another test. Maybe you took my tips in the beginning of this video to help you study for another test or whatever, but comment below if this video was able to help you. So thank you guys for watching. That's all I have for you in this video. I will see you guys in the next video where I inspire your desire to be great, to be great, to be great. Bye.